Businesses global or local, as a matter of fact, have been faced with serious major challenges in these trying times. But we know that businesses must continue in order for us to be able to get the economy moving in a way that we are able to take care of every single concern that the economy and of course social lives offers. Hello and welcome. This is Business Matters, where business truly matters. These are very trying times in which businesses are hugely impacted, whether positively or negatively, depending from which divide that you are looking at it from. From our stock exchange industry to our solid minerals, even to the oil and gas, this present challenge that we're all facing has impacted on us in a way that has taught us that sustainability matters in business prosperity. On that note, let us take our business update for this week. Hey beautiful, your eyes, your smile are all begging me to take you home tonight. Now reading page three. <laughs> Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. An expert is an individual who has professional qualification either by certification or experience, having invested time in generating and creating all kinds of understanding and information that can help you and I understand things better. And on that note, we are going to be taking our professional segment when we have a professional in the house to help us through our Zoom communication on what exactly our topic for the day is going to be all about. <music> All right, thank you for joining us today on Business Matters. We are going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, as you and I know, the coronavirus pandemic has hit the society and the world really badly. And for that reason, a lot of our guests can't be in the studio. So we are going to be interacting with our first guests with this whole new season um, through the Zoom network. She's no other person uh, than an administrator par excellence who sits on the board of um, Eden Hotel and resort as the managing director. Married with children, certainly. She has several certificates, which includes recruitment and selection. She also has in personnel management. She is a fellow of the Institute of Certified Business Consultants of Nigeria, a member of five professional bodies, which includes Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply Management, Fashion Designers Association uh, of Nigeria, and she is the chairman, or the chairperson, as you might choose to say, of Nigerian Association of Small Scale Industries, NASI, where she is currently definitely giving us much more service. Of course, to explore the topic, customer service environment is no other person than Jetrude Ugonna Akimia. She is the present chairperson for NASI. You're welcome, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's an excitement for me because uh, a lot of what is going on in the world today People are beginning to wonder how businesses themselves are thriving. 
Um, and if businesses do not have customer services and they do not have a customer engagement, then obviously those businesses will definitely collapse. As a way of starting up, Ma, our topic is customer service environment. There seems to be so much about customer service, customer service, this and that. What exactly, Ma, is customer service environment? Okay, first we have to understand what customer service is all about. And it is uh, attracting customers, uh, in a, uh, which is the primary goal of any uh, uh, organization. Yes. So because uh, for most businesses, uh, the customer is the person who creates the demand uh, for the goods or the services that you render. Uh, so it is important that customer service is geared towards taking into consideration the customer's opinions, the customer's likes, values, and um, uh, what will make him patronize that service. So it's very important that customer service is key to any operation or any uh, uh, project that any organization wants to bring out. Okay. So... We know, for example, we are faced with a global pandemic that has impacted every sector of the world's economy. We also understand that the economy must also thrive. Of recent, uh, the government have announced uh, the ease of lockdown in order for people to, certain level of people to actually go to work and do one or two things, as the case may be. Um, could you share with us, uh, in terms of how that has impacted on businesses uh, in that regard, and then... Should we not have a total ease down or is the lockdown and the ease of lockdown need to continue the way until we are able to get a proper guarantee that the customers themselves will be protected? Um, there, there's something that the uh, World Health Organization uh, official said, that we need to be alive to run businesses. Oh, that is true. We need to be alive <laughs> to even patronize these businesses. So um, the, the federal government, through the uh, presidential uh, uh, task force, as well as Lagos State, they've set up some guidelines which uh, are meant to manage the situation and the pandemic the, as things are, as the case uh, the, is, so that even in operating our businesses, we are safe and we don't fall ill you know, so, uh, so that it does not jeopardize our, ch our chances of uh, doing well even in our businesses or our, even our staff or the client himself. Because there's no point exposing your staff or your clients to danger all because you want to sell a product. That's true. It is very key. So there has to be a balancing act. So I believe that what government has done is very important. The guidelines they have set for these uh, um, period. Period for the east uh, down. We just have to follow them through. Okay. I, I, I advise my members and I encourage them that look, um, this period does not mean that we should just uh, fold our arms. We must take advantage of what uh, opportunities that are available in this time True. to recreate your business. True. Um, and expose that business to other aspects of marketing, um, maybe online, or how to reach your clients, get to know them better, and, and so that your services uh, can still be uh, needed, or okay. you can even still sell them uh, wherever you are. So I believe that uh, the, the, the protocols are in place, and I think they are very necessary. Certainly, we look at the modern day as it is, and we know we are living in a digital age. And uh, with regards to customer service environment, I begin to wonder where does the modern day technology help us to be able to bridge the gap? Because as much as we need to maintain social distance and ensure that the virus does not spread, we also need to be able to leverage on technology. How do you see that being a solution in order to help even the patronage that you've actually mentioned, man? Oh, modern day technology, it's actually... Uh, it came at the right time for us, for uh, producers. Why I say so is because when the lockdown came on, there was the need to go online to market our products, to sell the products, to reach our clients. You know, and I, I recall during the lockdown, many of our members 
required uh, passes to deliver products to um, goods, especially uh, food items, uh, to uh, customers who required them. You know, and we had to get these passes for them because people who went online, uh, pasting them on, uh, on on Facebook, on uh, uh, Instagram, Instagram on Tumblr, and they on... were able to make very good sales. Mm. We know for sure that. Uh, the digital age itself, uh, regardless of some of the challenges that's come about, it has, it's offering us a wonderful opportunity which, which I think people in logistics as well as production, like you had mentioned, will, will be the ones who, who are making so much money. So as a matter of fact, the customers themselves do not even need to get out of the house. All they need to do is to pick up their phone, make a phone call, and then place their order. And then whatever it is they've, they've ordered is delivered. And so what, what amazes me now, madam, um, do we see cashless Nigerian policy um, um, also helping us drive a very safe customer service environment? Yes. The cashless policy for Nigeria, for me, if you ask me, came really uh, late because oh. uh, in other countries, they've gone cashless many years ahead of us. Mm. You know, but it's been wonderful because it just came on time for this period, because the lockdown has made it almost impossible to enter a bank mm. and then uh, withdraw your cash. You, if you try going to a bank now, you see a long queue. That's true. You know, so it has helped because people can make transfers, people can uh, 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 um, yeah, make purchases online, people can make orders, and these items are delivered. You know, so and uh, I recall during the period there were one or two people that complained of uh, where they were still selling cash. And mm. they had problems of even depositing this cash in banks. Mm. So the cashless uh, policy, honestly, is actually uh, a very good policy for us at this time going forward <clears throat> because uh, it will reduce the burden of carrying cash, number one. And the cash, whether you would uh, like it or not, the cash handling is also a problem because so many people are touching this cash. and. With the coronavirus going on and the chocolate and the top that this, uh, it stays on the surface of any item for up to nine days, there is no guarantee that any cash you're holding has not been infected. So mm. it's even safer for our health to uh, go cashless at this time, if you ask me. Uh, we, as long as we need to be able to maintain the economy, uh, the issue of jobs and employment is a major concern, as a matter of fact, especially to this present administration. Uh, because we've read in the news that a lot of people have been laid off, a lot of businesses themselves seems to, they're facing a huge challenge. How, how does the personal management aspect of uh, management help to drive the customer service environment in order for us to, be en to ensure that employment is not threatened, ma'am? Oh, the, the personnel is very important. That one, you keep your staff safe. Um, I, I, uh, I talk to my members and I tell them, especially those in the food and the, the drug the, uh, services, services yes. that they, should, they must um, make sure that their staff uh, go through the food safety uh, certification uh, and they are tested to make sure that they're healthy so that they don't <coughs> infect clients Sorry. that may come forward. And then secondly, you, uh, it's, it's important that the staff are properly uh, motivated. You know, yeah. um, for the small business, I encourage them to have meetings with their staff, especially if the uh, finances are not so good, and encourage them to, you know, weather the storm. But I don't believe in layoffs. I don't believe in layoffs mm. because I must uh, let you know that it's important to give your staff a sense of belonging that's true if you have a staff if you have staff that have worked with you for nine years ten years mm. it's really unfair that in the last few months because a few problems you now ask them all to go and lay some of them up mm. people who have been loyal to you, to you. Have served mm. you for this mm. long mm. so the, the the organization must find a way to try and manage their resources mm. so that staff can still be accommodated. Mm. But you're right, madam. Nevertheless, uh, we are going to be going on a break as soon as we are back. Our business matters continues. And my guest has been Madam Getru. She is the chairperson for NASI.
Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Business Matters on NTA. Before we went to the break, I was speaking with Madam Jetrude Ungona Amakime, who is the present chairperson for NASIL, and then we were, we were talking about customer service environment. And on that note, Madam, we, 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 you, you have expressed some kind of um, emotional, sent, uh, sentimental feeling in terms that you are not the kind of person who will support um, layoff, uh, as the case might be. However, we, we also know that most organizations will give 25% of the salaries some staffs are earning because the businesses or whatever it is, is not as dynamic as it used to be. Even Nigeria itself has not been selling as much crude oil because, I mean, uh, most production, uh, production facilities are not in full, uh, they're not operating at full capacity. However, we know for sure one of the areas that uh, a lot of us are much more concerned about is in the area of travel. And I know that the travel industry is beginning to, you know, gradually open up as a case might be in order to facilitate um, the business, business environment, so to speak. And I know you have a certificate in that as well, Ma. Uh, how do yes. you see the aviation sector? And um, is it actually advisable that the aviation, uh, uh, um, the airports themselves become fully open at this time? Huh? Yes. Um... For a, a teeming population of uh, Nigerians that we have, it's important that the uh, economy opens up uh, because it's going to be difficult if we shut it down to take care of the number of uh, unemployed youths that are available uh, around. But when the economy opens up, people who move around are able to find uh, some, something to do. The aviation industry takes care of a lot of people. There are so many ancillary businesses that come with the aviation uh, industry, industry, the opening okay. up of that, uh, that industry. Okay. The taxi drivers, the pickups and the drop-offs, okay. those that service the uh, airlines in terms of uh, bringing food, uh, bringing uh, all the, the toiletries, oh, all those other... That is uh, very true. Uh, that is very that true. Very true. Very the true. the airline industry. And then there are staff, there are the uh, full-time staff and then the casual staff. So a lot of people are dependent on that source uh, for their regular uh, income. So it's very important that we open it up. And then the measures put in place, from what I have watched on television, both abroad and in Nigeria, I've seen that um, the, 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 there's a lot of adherence to what is in place. And if we continue like that, I believe that uh, it will be okay the gradual opening of that sector will do very well for our, our, our economy. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the good, the good uh, news... I, the... I must say that yes. while the uh, oil is not doing well uh, any longer in the uh, economy, in the export, export market, market yes. our, our local products are doing very well in the export market. Wonderful. For example, the agricultural products True. that have been sent out of, uh, abroad. Uh, you know, so if we can target these areas, right now a lot of it are even sent out as a uh, cargo, uh, uh, air cargo, so air freight. So it's very important that we encourage that so that we can end some foreign exchange both for the nation and for the uh, for the people as well. Madam, you, you are the chairman of uh, um, uh, an association that oversees a lot of small scale businesses and exactly what they do. And I know that uh, President, uh, President Buhari himself uh, has given out certain orders in terms of um, loans, uh, which um, small businesses themselves should obviously benefit from. I think that's part of the palliative that this present administration is, has definitely rolled out. Uh, and I think so much that without the financings, a lot of those small-scale businesses might not be able to have enough funds for them to be able to engage in terms of production. And without those production, we might not have those products and services which the customer itself has to be able to patronize because we're dealing with customer service environment as the case is. If we don't have products or services or brands, obviously there is no point to it. But we know that funds and finance are important. How has your association or the small-scale businesses people you know have they taken advantage of these different government funds through the CBN as the case is, ma'am? Um, well, I must actually appreciate the federal government for the uh, 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 palliatives they have put forward for uh, businesses, as well as uh, 
the, the CBN intervention uh, for small businesses. Uh, many of our members uh, have been able to access these funds. Um, I'm happy to say that. That's good news. Um, That's good there's news. still a backlog. We are, uh, unfortunately, the funds start, uh, they started releasing them pretty late from June. So okay. there's a backlog of members, of a lot of people who applied as far back as last year and are still waiting. Uh, and uh, like the many complain, they cost because uh, on application you cost some items in terms uh, that is your equipment and all that. And these costs have gone up because of inflation. That's so uh, many of them, uh, you know, they already are complaining that this money, is, by the time it gets to them, it, it, it cannot even meet those demands any longer. Mm. So it's important that government, they started a good thing that they see it through and make sure that the people that have applied can access these funds. All right, Ma, as a way of wrapping up, um, what advice will you give to small businesses? One, uh, what advice will you also give to the government? Just a way to summarize, Ma. Okay, for the businesses, um, we have to re strategize. That's what I tell my members. Look at your business, take this time out, think about it. How best can you modify your business to make it one, uh, cost effective? Two, productive, and then three, what customer, you find your, your market niche, which area will best suit your business? If the business you have now is no longer 20th century and 21st century compliance, you must look at it again and revisit it and see how can I improve. And then lastly, for the government, uh, it's important that we try to buy into the MSME. Like uh, in all countries that I know of, MSME is the bedrock of the economy, not oil, not uh, government uh, uh, business. So it's important because they employ uh, most of the labor. So it's very important that government buying encourage them and if possible, scale up the ones that are doing well so that they get bigger and employ more uh, 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 staff because try to start new industries is going to be where it will cost a lot of money. That's true. But if you go into a business that is already running, you just need to invest a little. Thank you so very much, uh, Madam Jetro Ngona Akimia, the chairman of uh, Maxiu. <laughs> anyway, Madam, it's been wonderful, and uh, I'm glad that we had this one on one through. Um, the visual meeting, as the case might be. So this is more like virtual broadcasting and virtual television, as we are doing. Thank you so very much one more time, huh? and then we hope to have you some other time on Business Matters. Thank you very much. Have okay. a good day. You too, man. Well, viewers, this is so much we are going to bring to you on Business Matters, but Business Matters continue. Please stay tuned. As we've seen, the customer service environment is a very important aspect of business management. Just as we know that businesses themselves must produce goods and services that the customers themselves will be able to patronize. And you and I have come to understand that the customer is both king and queen. Regardless of the coronavirus pandemic in the society and in the world today, we certainly believe that as the economy begins to pick up, the customer's confidence will be there for us to be able to ensure we create a dynamic environment. This is so much we can bring to you on Business Matters today. Please join us on all our social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, and the rest of them. And we'll come away again by the grace of God. This is so much we have to offer. On my note, my name is Steven, the Palabal Lawson. Bye-bye.